Hi everyone, this video is for Ask Miss Chris. Um, she said that she wants to try spinning. So she said she has a spindle and some fiber, but she needs help getting started. Um, first thing first, let me, you can make a leader using yarn that you already have. You don't have to make a leader leader from the fiber you're going to spin. Um, and that's the, what you're going to use as your starter yarn. This is about a little over a yard probably. And you don't really need this much fiber. You probably need, that, you probably need about half of that. So about half a yard to get you started. Get my scissors. Okay. Um... So here's my naked spindle. No fiber. No fibers hiding away anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slip knot. You don't even have to make a slip knot. What you can do is you can hold a short a short piece of your fiber on your spindle going up towards your wall, and then you just hold that piece down with your thumb. And then you take this thread here and you just wrap it around your spindle shaft. Then you come down and wrap around your spindle shaft. And then you just wrap it around your hook and you're good to go. You got your leader right there. To get you started, here's a piece of roving. It's a uh, carded roving. It's, as you can see, it's not very well aligned. It's just as if it came off of the drum carter at the mill. Um, had they run it through the uh, pen drafter, they could align the fibers even more. But I prefer it coming off like this because it stays light and airy and spongy, just as if I had carded it myself. So you have your your leader that you made yourself with a piece of leftover yarn and what I do is I lay my leader inside my fiber okay so it's, it's like trying to roll up a cigarette or pretend it's a hot dog bun and you're going to put the hot dog in the middle of the bun okay yes I know it's a skinny hot dog but it's just an analogy so I have roll it over and so now the, the leader is encased in my fiber that I'm going to spin and so now I'm going to give my spindle a twist. And I'm going to let it keep twisting because this is cotton, so it'll take a while. As you can see, it's starting to draw up that way and it's getting ready to start back spinning. So I'm twisting it again. Okay. Now, to keep me, this is how much twist is in this fiber. So it's a lot of twist. And I'm pinching it here to keep it from traveling back into the rest of my roving and causing an unholy mess. So we're going to do what's called park and draft. We're going to park the spindle shaft under our armpit or you can park it between your knees. Okay? But I don't, I can't adjust the camera and stuff right now. So then what we're going to do is we're going to pinch right here where our fiber joins with our uh, leader. Okay? So we're pinching right here. I'm going to be doing this perpendicular. I do that a lot. And then we're going to just draft just a little bit until we get to the other end of our leader. And then we're going to let go. And that twist is going to travel from here down, capture that fiber that we wrapped around the leader, and then down here. So this is where it ends at, where we're pinching the very end of our leader. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this yarn onto our spindle shaft. So we'll be a little bit closer to our hook. Okay. And now we're going to spin again, get us some twist, and then we're going to park again. We're going to pinch at the end, and we're going to draft, and we're going to pinch, and we're going to let go. And now the twist has traveled from the leader area into just the rolling. So we're going to pinch, draft, pinch, and let go again. Okay? 
and this time I'm twisting by hand because I'm trying to get enough twist in here that I can move it down again and put a little bit more onto my spindle shaft and then we're going to do it again. We're going to spin it, get twist, park it, pinch, draft, release, pinch, draft, release, and spin again. And pinch, draft, release, pinch, draft, release, pinch. And we're going to pinch it right there. And we're going to spin it again. Okay, and now we're going to wind some of this onto our um, spindle shaft. Okay, if you notice, you'll see that I take my fiber, my yarn around my hook more than once. This gives me a more balanced spin. I don't end up with a lot of wobble as much. But let's say you were spinning and you got like this weird wobble, just gently let it bump your hand or something and that'll stop it or it'll stop it from spinning crazy um, but this this is a heavier spindle as you can see the wall is heavy and so is the shell because I had it specifically made cause for me cause I, um, man hand so to speak and plus I wanted another spindle that I could ply from and that's what this spindle was for that's why it's so heavy and so we're going to now Park and draft again. Okay. And like I said, this is a, a yarn that is going to be a textured yarn. Um, this roving has not been, it was it was a lumpy kind of roving to start with, with nips and stuff from the actual fleece. The fleece was nippy. And so this roving is a little nippy. It was a high micron count Rambouillet fleece. And the equipment at the mill not my friend's meals, but somebody else's meal. I bought it from off of Etsy. Their um, equipment couldn't handle that fleece, and so it ended up kind of messing it up some. But it's perfect for a hand spinner who just wants some fleece to play with. It was cheap, so I got it. It was already washed, so I just had it roughly carded into roving at um, my meal that was run by Jana and Eric um, Windswept Farms. So you just keep doing it, and eventually, after you um, master the park and draft technique, you can do what I'm doing, which is free spinning, and um, and you won't have to park and draft. You can spin on the fly, so to speak, spin on the fly like that. You can also ply on the fly. There's a video by Tammy Rizzo that teaches you how to go ahead and spin and ply, and three ply your yarn at the same time. I don't do that because I like plying my yarn. On my spinning wheels now, and plus I don't fill up my um, spindle so fast if I don't go ahead and ply. It. Excuse me, but I guess if you're making like a little sample, you can go ahead and ply on the fly. Oops. So this this particular fiber makes it very easy to. Go ahead and uh, spin a lumpy, lumpy worsted weight yarn. So, um, I hope that helped you as far as um, making a leader so you can get started spinning. I'm going to show you how to do it if, if, let's say, you didn't have any yarn in your house. So, I'm going to show you how to do it um, this way as well. What you can do is you can take your fiber, your raw fiber, and you more than likely you have a cone top, something very smooth. So let me get some so I can show you. I get some of the okay. More than likely, and I'm not sure because you didn't say, but if you have a braid of roving, um, the way you can get started is you unravel some of your braid, and I'm just going to pull off a little piece because I don't want to use this because I would need all this for some something. Uh, let's see. 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 Let's see.
right, I found some. I got like a pound of this stuff, so I don't mind using it. And for those of you who might be curious about this particular fiber, it's, I think it's made by Ashland Bay and it's called Sugar or something. Um, but you can find it at Cooper Moose, Copper Moose on um, eBay and Etsy. He has this. I wish you could see like the true colors, but it's very, very, very pretty Rover. And this could be like a World of Warcraft thing Rover too. So I'll uh, ask for something else. So anyway, you might end up with commercially prepared rover and it's a thick um, rope. That's what they call them ropes. It looks like this. And what I do when I get rover like this is I pre-draft my rover. Basically you need to see about how much your staple length is. And this is about six inch, six or seven inches staple length. So to pre-draft your rover, and I think I showed you guys this before, but now you know you got about a seven-inch staple. So you pull until you guesstimate this starting to thin out. It's about seven inches. You go to where you stop pulling, and you just keep doing that all the way down the rover, and that's called pre-drafting your rover. You're getting that rover loosened up. You're finding any kind of little nips and stuff like that that you can pull off of that rover, so it doesn't. If you or if you're trying to get a very smooth yarn. You, you'll be able to see what is going on with your fiber. Um, I think of pre-drafting pre as a way to get to know your fiber, to get your fiber in the very best condition possible for you to use. Okay, so this is the section that I've pre-drafted. What you're going to do is you can roll it on your leg or you can roll it on your fingers. But you can take that roving and you can use your fingers and you can start getting a little twist and draft a little and then twist using your fingers okay and you can do that until you have about that's about what seven or eight inches if not a little bit more you can do that and make sure you have plenty of twisting okay all right. Then what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to hook it around your spindle hook, okay? You wrap it around your spindle hook. All right. And then you pick it up. Okay. Not drop it. Wrap it around your spindle hook and then hold it in your other and together with the other fiber. Then you're going to spin your spindle, okay, and spin it again, just get plenty of twists, and then you're going to park it, okay, and then you're going to draft, pinch, release, draft, pinch, release, alright, and you're going to do this until it's long enough to go around your spindle shaft and for you to work with comfortably, you're going to park, pinch, release, draft, pinch, release, and you're going to just do that until you get about a little foot or more of fiber left. Make sure you put plenty of twist in it so it won't fall apart on you. Alright, now, this is how much I have, and notice it's off of the top of my hook. Now what I want to do is, just like I wrapped it before, I'm going to wrap this, crossing over it onto my spindle shaft and I'm going to put it around my hook more than once and now I'm ready to go using a leader I created from the fiber that I have to spin and now you can just spin to your heart's content and your first yarn is not going to be perfect um, you can you can just enjoy the process of getting to learn to, to, of learning how to how to how to spin um let's see if I can get you get this this a thing to focus on just my hands. Let me see. Okay. 
you see this triangular section right here this is called your draft zone okay that's your draft zone that's where you don't want your twist traveling into your draft zone until you're ready for it to travel there. That's why you pinch right before your draft zone to keep your twist out of that area. Because you don't want your twist traveling back here into these into these fibers that you, you want to spin. Because what it does is is it for some fibers which fell easily, you can end up with a holy unholy mess. Or it could just ruin the look of the yarn you're working on. So you pinch right before that triangular shaped draft zone. Now, when you're ready for twist to travel out of the, if you're, when you're ready for twist to travel out of the area by your hook into your drafting area, then you simply draft back. Okay, and then you pinch and you release, and the twist will travel. Now we got to add some more spin, some more energy, kinetic energy, or twist into our fiber so we're going to spin again okay and I'm going to show you this again if I can alright so I'm pinching right here okay with my right hand and then you can see here here's my draft zone the triangular shape and so I'm going to draft a little bit to about the width the, releasing as much fiber as I, the thickness of the yarn that I want to make and then I'm going to pinch where I want it to stop at and then I'm going to release and then the twist will travel and but it won't move beyond it it doesn't move beyond my um where I'm pinching it into my draft area and the rest of my rope. So that's something else that you can um be be um conscious of when you're first learning to spin is know where your draft zone is at, know where your fingers are. It's eye hand coordination and muscle memory and it's gonna it's it's going to take you a little bit to get it together, but I'm pretty sure you will. You just have to give yourself time and give yourself permission to make mistakes and give yourself permission to learn from those mistakes and to move on. Um, I hope this helps you get started. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me. Videotape what you're doing. If you get hung up on something, then maybe I can watch the video and then I can like, give you an idea of, of different things that you can try. But each spinner, the way they spin, is an individual thing. You have to learn how your body handles spinning yarn, how your hands move, how your hands draft, what feels good to you, what feels comfortable, comfortable to you, and what yarn you naturally spin. Some people are very, very good at spinning those singles that you see on Etsy. That seems to be what makes them happy. That seems to be the type of yarn that they want to make from deep inside. Um, then you have people who want to make that art yarn with the coils and the bees and the feathers and all this other stuff in it. And that's what they want to do. That's what they spin. And, and you know, and it's each to their own. I'm a traditionalist. I like making yarn that is traditional yarn. Whether it's lace weight, whether it's sock weight. It's hard for me to get a bulky uh, yarn. Um, I have gotten the video, um, I think it's Maggie Casey's video of, about how to spin the book of yarn and um and I watched that and it has been helping also having this electric spinning wheel which forces me to move my hands faster is also helping me learn how to do um, bulkier yarns um so even I still am still learning particular techniques that I where I want to produce a bulkier yarn because right now if I want a really thick yarn I have to spin like four singles and then ply those four singles to get a worsted weight yarn, such as a red heart four ply, something about that thick. I have to spin four to five singles and ply them together. That's how hard it is for me to get a consistent um, yarn to, to get to a thickness by using a three ply or two ply until I got this electric spinning wheel. So, good luck with your spinning. Sorry the video ran so long. Hopefully you got some some. Um, good insight out of it and like I said before feel free um, to, to contact me and I'll, I'll have no problems with doing another video to help you or and show me what you're doing and that way I can maybe I might be able to give you some advice to help you along 
um, be sure to check your local library. They may have books on spinning that can help. YouTube, there's lots of videos for spindle spinning on YouTube. Look those up. Watch the ladies' techniques. And, and take what you can from them and, and, and apply it to your particular style of spinning if, if you can. Um, and that's it. So good luck.